Grace Baptist Church and Sunday School. The title for our message today is The Hope of Glory, Part 1. We will not be dealing with the title this morning, The Hope of Glory, but we will be setting the scene to do so next week, God willing. Today our sights will be on Christ in you. And again, as we begin this lesson today, by stating the three words immediately before our title, taken from Colossians 1.27, those three words and our title, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I had no idea when God gave me last week's lesson that it would be an introduction for this week's message. But in fact, it was. Therefore, I, I must review some very important truths crucial to what we will cover today, review from last week. God sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts in regeneration. That new birth, that unction, that anointing gave us a mind of Christ, an understanding as the result of God's sovereign grace. That understanding was accompanied by faith and repentance when we heard in our new hearts the gospel of our salvation. You cannot teach the unction, that anointing, into anyone. That is the power of God in the souls of human beings according to the good pleasure of God's own will. However, once God is pleased to anoint his elect as he saves them, he sends them human beings to deliver the gospel of our salvation, which proves irresistible due to the anointing from God himself. Being that the anointing from the Holy One is in fact the Holy Spirit, the Christian has the living God abiding in the soul. At that point, of having eternal life abiding in us with the closest personal relationship human beings can have, which is knowing God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ, and also having the Spirit of God bearing witness with our new living spirit that we are children of God. At that point, at that point, we do not need anyone to teach us. We certainly don't need false teachers coming in to mislead us by teaching that the abiding of the Father and the Son in our souls and the promise of eternal life are not true. Christ abides in us and we know it. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. 1 John 4.13 If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. 1 John 5.9 In the matter of God, abiding in you and you abiding in him, you do not need anyone to teach you. Last week we also saw that the, un the, the unction, the anointing, is the Holy Spirit of the Father and the Son. 
And that spirit causes us to know all. Remember 1 John 2, 20. We determined that knowing all cannot possibly mean knowing all about everything. Nor does it mean knowing all concerning God. Turn to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verses 33 through 36. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counselor? Or who, or who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him? For of him, God, and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. But. Getting back to 1 John 2.20 and this unction uh, from the Holy One causing us to know all. The text does mean that God's people know who is all. And we know him. We know him. We have been made alive together with him. Colossians 3.11 then, the very end of that verse, verse, Christ, the all and in all. And now as we move on with our lesson for today, I pray that I will evidence the gift of God's teaching for the equipping of the saints, for the work of of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect or complete human being, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I really do have a conviction in my soul to teach God's word, and to use Paul's words from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, necessity is laid upon me. It is my heart's desire to teach the word of God. And I would ask personally, please pray for me while I am in the position, this position, of teaching Sunday school. Christ, the all and in all. Christ is our advocate, our brother, our comforter, our friend, our great high priest, our God, our holiness, our intercessor, our justification, our King, our life, our Lord, our Master, our Mediator, our Passover, our Peace, our Prophet, our Redemption, our Righteousness, our Sanctification, our Savior, our Truth, our Way, our Wisdom, our word. These titles, though not exhaustive, introduce us to the brightness of the excellence of Christ. Christ. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 
chapter 1, and we're going to be reading verses 26 and 27. Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. How rich, how rich these verses are. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, going back through these verses a little more slowly, commenting on them, a mystery hidden for thousands of years was made known to God's saints, God's people, and that's you, who were set apart by God for God. That's you if you know Christ. Now, the word mystery, the word mystery here in the Greek is absolutely fascinating. I think that you will enjoy this. Indeed, the English word mystery comes from the Greek, mysterion. The word means, please listen up. If you don't get it this time, listen to it again by way of a CD or by way of looking at it on the internet again. The word mystery means a matter to the knowledge of which initiation is necessary. you got to be initiated to know what this mystery, uh, mystery is. A secret which would remain secret unless it is revealed. Oh, a secret which can only be known by revelation. We need to be initiated by the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, to know the Lord Jesus unto eternal life. We are initiated by regeneration. Now let's look at uh, verse 27 a little more closely. Got some things to explain to you here. To them God willed to make known. To them, I think the King James says to whom, the saints, again folks, and that is you if you are a Christian. What? Has God willed to make known to you? And before we get there, willed to make known. In the King James Version, it says, would make known. As if it was one tense of just one verb. Folks, what we have here is two completely separate words. Willed is the verb which is followed by the infinitive to make known. An infinitive must have the word to in it. Two completely separate words in the Greek. The first word, a verb, and the second word, an infinitive, which is a verbal. Now, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference if you understood everything that I just said, but I've taken the time to point this out because of the overwhelming fact that God was determined in this text to reveal his will. To them, to us, God willed to make known. Now, what is God willing to make known unto us? The riches of the glory of this mystery. And I want us to look first at the glory. And at this point, let me remind you 
Christ, Christ, the all and in all. Friends, Christ is the all. He is all. Turn to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. You're going to just quickly look at this. We're just really looking at uh, the first part of that verse. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 and the last part of that verse. Speaking of the Son of God, excuse me, the first part of that verse. Speaking of the Son of God, who being the brightness of the glory and the express image of his person. Now, I know most Bibles have his, if you'll notice, that is an inserted word before glory, who is the brightness of the glory. The word brightness can mean radiance. Christ is the essence of glory. That which makes glory, glory, is Christ's brightness, his absolute purity. 1 Timothy 6.16 says, Christ dwells in unapproachable light, whom no human being has seen or can see. Heavenly Jerusalem, the city of God, the church, In Revelation 21, 23, no verse that I know of can make it any more clear that Jesus Christ is the glory of God. Reading Revelation 21, 23, the city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God illuminated it. The King James Version says, did lighten it. The glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Now, (laughs) nothing can be more clear than that. The glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Christ is the glory of God. Now the riches of the glory of this mystery. Turn over to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. Just two books back. Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to be reading verses 8 and 9. Again, these verses are just loaded with the riches of God's word. To me, Paul, who am less than the least of all saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. Folks, it's it's very clear as we have moved now from Colossians to Ephesians, the unsearchable riches of Christ are the riches of the glory of this mystery spoken of in Colossians chapter 1. Christ is the riches of the glory and central to, at the heart of, the unsearchable riches of Christ is the fellowship of the mystery, as it says right there, the communion of the mystery. And note that Paul says that grace was given him so that by his preaching he was to make all see the fellowship of the mystery. Are you and I looking? Are you and I 
looking. The best description of the fellowship of the mystery that I know is from our text in Colossians 1.27. Christ in you. The fellowship, communion with the mystery is Christ in you. This is the spirit of Christ indwelling us. We know Christ personally and intimately because of this indwelling. We have a mind of Christ in the person of Christ's spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.16 We have a measure of the character of Christ in the fruit of of the Spirit of Christ. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Oh, and listen to this. We share in the fellowship of Christ's sufferings in being united to him. If you are, in fact, indwelt by the Spirit of Christ, you cannot avoid the fellowship of his sufferings. Philippians 3.10 But take heart, take heart, if you'd rather not be involved in the fellowship of his sufferings. The sufferings of this present time are not comparable with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8.18 and may I suggest the, the glory revealed in us will be the completed, perfect conformity to the image of Christ. Romans chapter 8, verses 29 and 30. Number one, number one, Christ is the glory of this mystery. Number two, Christ is the riches of the glory of this mystery. Now turning back to Colossians 1.27, our key verse, our key text, Christ in you is the mystery. God indwelling his elect human beings, human beings who have been cleansed from all sin and all unrighteousness by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Elect human beings who are now viewed as perfectly righteous by the imputation of Christ's perfect righteousness to them. And let us not forget, if you have the Holy Spirit indwelling you, you not only have the Spirit of Christ, but you have the Spirit of your Father as well. They are one and cannot be separated. And now I am going to close with two verses, verses excuse me, from last week's lesson, which are perfectly fitting for today's message. Christ in you, in the person of the Holy Spirit, is the assurance. Did you hear that? Christ in you in the person of the Holy Spirit, is the assurance that you abide in Christ. By this we know, and as I said last week, not that we guess, not that we think, by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. 1 John 3. 24. And next, the last part of 1 John 2, 27. But as 
the same anointing that is the Holy Spirit of God teaches you concerning all, and what does that mean according to what I said? Christ is the all. As the Holy Spirit of God teaches you concerning Christ and is true and is not a lie in reference to those who would mislead you away from the true Christ, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Did you hear that now? You will abide in him. This is the assurance, blessed assurance that we need. And may I add the Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 3. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Amen.